Hi guys, my name is Shikha and welcome to my channel Shikha Reads. Today I'm here with a book haul video. We are in third month of 2018 and I have already acquired few books. Now most of these are review copies. I think I only bought one book in last two months. Generally I prefer to read review copies completely blank. I mean I read the blurb but I avoid checking Goodreads because I don't want my reviews to get biased. So that's why I do not have much idea about these books. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each one. Okay, just a heads up before I start the video. If you guys follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you must have already seen these books. So if you want, you can skip this video or you can watch it. It's completely up to you. And now let me just show you the books. Okay, first I'm going to show you all the books sent to me by Bloomsbury India for review. And the first one is That Thing We Call A Heart by Sheba Kareem. It's a YA genre book about two Pakistani girls who live in America. Our main protagonist is Shabnam and then we have her friend Farah. Shabnam is a teenage drama queen. <laughs> she kisses a popular guy over the summer and then she tells a huge lie about a tragedy that happened to her family during India-Pakistan partition. And then she falls in love with another guy. As I said, total drama queen. And her friend Farah, she is a live wire. Now she is a teenage hijabi girl in America and I'm getting a vibe from this book that it's going to be one of those books in which friend is more important than the main character. So yeah, my hopes are high. Next we have Pretty Wild Girl by Ricky Khosla. It's a through and through Bollywood story about a starlet named Jasmine. She loves to say controversial things and when she wants to get something, she achieves it by hook or crook. We follow her journey from her childhood in a small town to big bad world of Bollywood and it's a pretty thick one so I'm guessing lots of things are going to happen in this book. There's a theory in my mind that it's actually about a real life starlet, Bollywood starlet and I don't know whether I'm right or wrong so I'm not going to take any names but I'm pretty excited to know whether it's true or not. Next we have Folk by Zoe Gilbert. It's an uncorrected proof copy. I have already read and reviewed this book on my blog. If you want you can check it out. Link will be down below. It's a fantasy story which takes place on a magical island called Neverness and I'm not using the word magical in a positive way because magic can equally curse or bless a person on this island. I didn't like the story very much. Mainly it's a short story collection where each story is somehow connected to another one and it was not mentioned in the blurb. So first when I started reading the book I was kind of confused and by the time I got it my interest was completely gone. It's too whimsical for my taste even though I like whimsical stories like Alice in Wonderland. I think it was just not my cup of tea. Next we have This Is How It Ends by Eva Dolan. I have absolutely no idea what this book is about. All I know is that it's a psychological thriller set in the world of social activism. We have two female protagonists, both of whom are social activists. One of them kills a person and then they both try to dispose the body. But of course, hell breaks loose. Now this book is so much hyped by the book bloggers that I'm a little bit afraid that it'll turn out to be another over hype books and I don't want that. I'm really looking forward to read a good thriller story. So yeah, fingers crossed. Next we have A World Without Whom by Emily J. Favela. It's a non-fiction book which talks about how to ace your social media game, which words to use, how to frame your sentences, how to use emoticons properly, basically what to do or not to do. Author herself is copy chief of BuzzFeed and she has shared so many important tips in this book for new bloggers and creators. For example, rather than using the word slave, we can use enslaved person or rather than using the word suicide, we can use killed oneself. So it's all about choosing your words carefully. I have read only 20% of this book, but I can assure you that it's a must read for new bloggers. Next, we have Videocracy by Kevin Aloka. It's a non-fiction book about YouTube trends and how we can improve our content by understanding those trends. By we, I mean we YouTubers. It talks about topics like how videos go viral or how sometimes some creators find such a large audience or how some weird videos become global phenomena. Basically, if you have a YouTube channel and you want to grow it, you must read this book. Now, I'm on social media and I'm a YouTuber also, so ideally I should read this book first. But as you can see, I'm surrounded by so many fantastic fiction books. So of course I'm going to read them first and then I'll read this one. Next we have another non-fiction book by Bloomsbury but it was sent to me by the author for review and that book is Happiness is All We Want by Ashutosh Mishra. I'm currently reading this book but I must confess that I don't generally read self-help books. I believe that life is the best teacher that we can have but Haley from Haley's blog, she praised this book so much that she got me interested too. This book is divided in four parts. First, we have introduction, then mental well-being, then physical well-being, and then spiritual well-being. Maintaining a balance between personal and professional life is not at all easy. I'm talking here from personal experience. We want to do so many things, but we never have time. So I'm really looking forward to understand that 
how this book is going to improve my overall well-being. Then we have Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. This is my first Lockhart story, so I didn't know what to expect. It's a psychological thriller story about jewels and emotion. I do want to explain the plot to you guys, but I can't without spoiling it for you, so I'm not going to try that. I have reviewed this book on my blog, you can check that out. I didn't like the story very much, mainly because it's a flashback story and I'm not a big fan of backward written stories. But I think if you like flashback stories, you will enjoy it. There is no big revelation waiting for you in the end, but the chain of events through which truth is revealed, that's very interesting and it's written in third person, which is unusual for a thriller story. I give it 3 out of 5. Next we have Cersei by Madeline Miller. I'm currently reading this book and enjoying it so much. I think it's going to release in April this year. It's author's second book. Her first book, Song of Achilles, won Orange Prize. It's of course a retelling of Greek mythology. Stories about Cersei. She is daughter of a water nymph and titan god Helios. Now whenever we read Greek stories, we are told that old gods were very cruel. They never cared about humans and when Olympians took over, everything was well and fine. Well, that's true in this book also. But Madeline Miller has written this story so beautifully that after a certain point, these old gods, they don't seem so cruel. I mean, they consider human worms, so there is that. But they behave so humanly around each other that you start liking them after a point. And I don't know whether I'm making any sense or not. Basically, I want to say that currently I'm loving this story. Then we have Arthala by Mr. Vivek Kumar. It's a Hindi book and part one of Sangram Sindhu Gatha, which is a mythological fantasy series. Um, plot is so vast that I can't explain it here, but you should definitely check it out. I have reviewed this book on my channel. So go check it out because I want everyone to read this book. I know it's not possible, but if you love Hindi and you want to read good Hindi stories, you should definitely, definitely check it out. I just absolutely love this book. I think it's going to be part of my top five favorite books of 2018. Yes, it it's that good. Every damn thing that happens in this book, it happens for a reason. Author has beautifully merged real life problems with fantasy world and it's the first time I have seen something like this. Everything works in favor of this story. Characters, plot, pace, description. So as you can tell, I'm in awe of this book right now. Okay, I got two non-fiction books from Yogi Books for review and the first one is Gleanings of the Road by Rabindranath Tagore. It's translated into English by Somdatta Mandal. It's a collection of Tagore's travel stories. He was an avid traveler. He used to write a lot while traveling. So this book is actually a compilation of many of his essays, articles and letters which he wrote while he was traveling abroad. While reading this book, you get an idea that how Tagore used to perceive Western society and what was his idea of traveling. Also, you get to see that how he developed as a traveler. At first, he was very hesitant and shy and then later on, he became very comfortable there. Somdatta Mandal has beautifully translated this book and if you're a non-Bengali who wants to read Tagore's work, then you should definitely read it once. Next, we have a self-help book, Is Your Mind Really Yours? by Ajay Sachdeva. I keep saying that I'm a fiction reader but my TBR pile is full of non-fiction books right now. I'm about to start this book and it talks about how we can break free from the shackles of programmed life. And what I'm getting from the content is that it talks about different facets of human relationship. For example, our relationship with ourselves, with our circumstances, with our partner, with our family, friends and society and our work and career. Now, one thing I can see is that it doesn't talk about religion because most self-help books and authors, they talk about religion and finding your own faith in difficult times. And it's very annoying because I'm an agnostic and I don't really follow any religion. So it's useless for me if I read a book which talks about religion. And I'm happy to see that this trope is not used in this book. And last but not the least is the classic that I bought, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I have read it so many times. Story is about Dashwood sisters, Eleanor and Marianne. They were very rich and then they become poor because their father died and left them nothing. So they shift to a seaside cottage and eventually they fell in love. But as they are stark opposite of each other, they fell for different kind of guys. But as we all know, Ishq hota nahi sabhi ke liye or love is not everyone's cup of tea. Everything is not as it seems. I highly, highly recommend this book. It's a complete 4 out of 5. Though it's not my favorite Austin story, my favorite one is Persuasion. But it's better than Pride and Prejudice. There, I said it. So these were all the books which I got in January and February. 
you know what reviewers say that reviewing books take them away from all the important books which they want to read and i agree to an extent because we all have huge tbr piles it doesn't matter whether we are readers or reviewers we all have so many books on our list which we want to read but it's not possible to read all the books so these books haunt us in our dreams or should i say our nightmares but honestly i feel i'm lucky because the books which i have received till now they are pretty good i mean most of them are and they have helped me to broaden my horizon i am reading so many non fiction books right now which is very unusual for me because earlier i used to read only fiction books so as i said i feel lucky and it's time to wrap up this video now please don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you next time bye